there has been some academic research on the effects of electronic nicotine delivery systems, also known as ENDS, on the body. First, let's break down your typical e-cig. You can think of an e-cig, vape, or jewel, much like a candy bar. It's made of a lot of different ingredients. Some of these are actively used by the body. These are the active ingredients. In a candy bar, these are things like sugar or carbohydrates, which are metabolized, essentially used for energy by the body. In ENDS, these are ingredients like nicotine or marijuana, or maybe surprisingly, the flavoring. Some of the other ingredients are filler materials. In a candy bar, these would be things like soy or butter, which have little nutritional value, but aid in the taste. In a vape, the filler material is a vehicle for carrying the active ingredients. This is usually an oil, such as propylene glycol or glycerol, the same ingredients that are in hand soap. These are mixed with a preservative, usually formaldehyde, which you might recognize as the ingredient used to preserve the rat or frog you might have dissected back in high school. When vaporized by the heating element within the vape and inhaled, both the filler and active ingredients are absorbed by the tissue in the lungs. The active ingredients and some of the filler materials then move into the bloodstream. From there, they travel through the body to various organs, such as the brain, liver, kidneys, and pancreas. These are important sites of hormone synthesis essentially where hormones are made. Hormones control virtually everything in the body, from when you go to sleep at night to your height, bone density, and even your mood. One of the most studied impacts of e cigs is on the changes in cognition as a result of nicotine. The nicotine from the bloodstream interacts with brain cells to increase a hormone called dopamine. This is the pleasure hormone. It's released in response to satisfying activities, such as eating something sweet or getting a like on Facebook or Instagram. The release of this hormone is the primary factor behind the addictive nature of nicotine. But, as my brother likes to say, not all vapes have nicotine in them. And he's right. Vapes allow the user to choose whether or not to put nicotine in the chamber and how much to use. However, a lack of nicotine does not stop the increased release of dopamine observed after using ENDS. In other words, there are other products in the vape or e-cig that also increase dopamine production. One of the ingredients that distinguishes vapes and e-cigs from traditional cigarettes is flavoring. While each flavoring is different, some have recently been linked to an increase in dopamine produced and released in the brain. But dopamine has more effects than simply making the user happier. Outside the brain, dopamine affects the kidneys and the pancreas by increasing urination through decreasing salt absorption in the kidney. Additionally, dopamine has been shown to decrease insulin production from the pancreas. This decreased insulin production is important because it mimics diabetes mellitus symptoms by decreasing the amount of sugar taken into your cells from the bloodstream. Let me explain how insulin works. After eating something sugary, like a candy bar, your body attempts to turn that sugar into energy. The body does this by transporting the sugar from the bloodstream into individual cells so that the powerhouse of the cell, the mitochondria, can turn that sugar into ATP to be used for activities such as breathing and running. But the process of transporting sugar into cells, such as muscle cells, requires insulin. Without insulin, you could go into a coma or even die. This domino effect of increasing dopamine through inhaling materials in an e-cig, vape, or jewel affects more than just cognition. It can affect the entire body and cause serious damage, specifically through creating a hormone imbalance.